It was a very well written speech. Joining me now is Anthony Albanese in Canberra and Josh Frydenberg in Melbourne. Lads, good morning. Good morning, good morning to you, Carlos. To good you, morning, first Alvo. of all. Um, a lot of promises last night. You've got more dough than Baker's Delight, it seems. Well, we're not giving away $80 billion in tax cuts to big companies and big banks. That'll enable us to give bigger and fairer uh, tax cuts to 10 million working Australians. It will allow us uh, to have uh, no fees for 100,000 TAFE students in areas of skill shortage. We shouldn't be needing to import carpenters and bricklayers into this country. We should be training Australians here to do those jobs. We'll have real investment in infrastructure and we'll reduce waiting times in hospitals by having increased funding for health care. Josh, I hate to point it out, but their tax cuts are bigger than yours. Well, their tax hit on retirees and businesses and your property amount to some $200 billion. Nobody's savings is safe with Bill Shorten. There was no mention in the budget reply last night about returning to surplus. There was no mention of national security and we know that he will continue to hit your hip pocket. So I think Bill Shorten has given you another roll goal guarantee last night that your taxes will rise under Labor. Now, Albo, um, how are you going to fund that cash splash on schools and hospitals? There's billions, billions of dollars. Well, we're not giving away $80 billion in these company tax cuts. That's how we're going to fund it. And we'll, we've made quite difficult decisions. Uh, decisions like on, on negative gearing uh, for future uh, purchases, none of it's uh, retrospective. But that was a tough decision that we took to the last election that the government actually knows is good policy that helps the bottom line and enables us to have the space to give Bigger tax cuts to those people who really need it, who are struggling. You know who is struggling? Oh, these poor kids on Newstart. Um, you couldn't find any more money in, in, in all of those giveaways for the kids on Newstart? Well, we made substantial announcements uh, last night. And one of the things about our real investment in infrastructure is that it will assist people to get into real jobs. That's why we're abolishing the fees for 100,000 TAFE students. So that's, that's, a no, that's a no to an increase in Newstart, right? Well, you can't do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what you have to do is uh, outline your priorities. Our priority is getting Australians into jobs, is investing in education and health, okay. and taking pressure off living standards but for those 10 million Australians. Carl, Carl can I just say that while Labor talks about getting people into jobs, it's the coalition and the Turnbull government that has delivered that. We've created more than a thousand jobs a day, nearly a million people are into work and that's why the balance is coming back okay. into balance, uh, the budget's coming back into balance a year earlier All right, for, because more people are in for jobs. For Labor MPs, let's move on. We're forced out of Parliament this week because of the citizenship issues. That's despite dozens of denials by Bill Shorten and other Labor MPs that there were no dual citizens in their ranks. Uh, here is, Anthony, this is actually you on our very own show. Well, Labor has a very rigorous process in place when you nominate. You're not worried? Uh, we check... No, we check these things out. We've checked out all our people. All our people are fine. We certainly in the Labor Party uh, do our due diligence. Susan Lamb is still a UK citizen, mm. the member for Longman. She's That's never nonsense. had a renunciation because of her Because she wasn't a British citizen. And she's still That's sitting in... Albo, Albo, <laughs> Albo. <laughs> Well, it's regrettable uh, that it's uh, happening. Uh, the, the High Court have made their decision. We've accepted uh, the umpire's uh, judgment. And uh, we're getting on with the business Sir? now of making sure that those MPs uh, return to continue to make a contribution for their electorate okay. and make a contribution here in Canberra. Okay, so, so, so right now, categorically, categorically, Albo, is everyone in your party safe? Uh, yes. <laughs> Are you sure you want to go with that? <laughs> well, look, all oh, you what, can what do... What about Anne? Is, all you is, can is do, Anne Alley OK? All you, yes. All you can do is make uh, judgments based upon the advice which you have, which is that all of these people uh, complied certainly with the previous High Court determination, mm. which was essentially that if uh, you'd, you'd made your, your best efforts... I mean, in, in Josh Wilson's case, of course, uh, this is a guy 
who was uh, pre-selected uh, at uh, the last minute uh, because he was a replacement candidate. He filled in the form on the day, uh, paid his money uh, on uh, the, the day after the money was taken out of his bank account. Yeah. And he was entitled to think, I, I, I'm of the view, he was entitled to think, given previous High Court determinations, that he would be OK. okay. Carl, right. can, I just Al, say, Albo, can I just say, Carl... Josh, you've got the 10 big, seconds. The big story here is that Bill Shorten is like a wounded gazelle and Albo is the lion there waiting in the long grass. Oh, and the question is, is he ready true. to pounce? Like is he ready to pounce? <laughs> is he ready to pounce? <laughs> like a that's tiger. That's the question. <laughs> Good try, Josh. <laughs> Roll like it out, Albo. Roll it out. Good try, mate. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Albo. Good to talk to you. He wasn't taking that bait, was he? No.